CPF and Rico Nardone and Byron Young. And Rico is the director of CPEC Environmental Association, a nonprofit organization dedicated to conserving Long Island wildlife and the environment. And he's chair of the Long Island Bad Miss Fish Worker. Byron Young is a retired section chief, fit fish and crustacean at New York State DEC. Uh, he, had, he was one of the original members of Long Island Adventist Fish Work Group and has been one of the biggest supporters and contributors to alewife monitoring on Long Island in the past 10 years. So take it away. All right, thank you. I'm Enrico, and that's Byron. <laughs> <laughs> He's the good one. I don't look like a fisheries biologist. Yes. <laughs> um, um, we haven't rehearsed this, so we're going to try to do this together, so bear with us. But I, I first just want to say thanks to John for the great uh, uh, start here today. Um, I'm assuming that you're interested in river herring uh, already and restoring Long Island's tributaries. If you're not sufficiently inspired, uh, please read uh, Running Silver. It's a great, it's a great book. Um, and I just want to also say how you know, um, this is a victory already, being here today, how exciting it is for those of us who have been working on uh, this issue for 10 or 20 years, um, to, have a, to have people actually talking about dam removal is a big step forward. And I want to just, I want to thank the estuary programs, uh, including uh, uh, Vicki and Cassie, um, in particular, for putting this together, and, and Hofstra for hosting this. It's, it's, it's an exciting, exciting day, and thanks for everybody for coming. Uh, our, our job is to uh, give you a little background on the, on the status of river herring in the region. And um, as I mentioned, we have been working on this uh, for 10 years or more. Um, all the estuary programs have been involved, and not just the estuary programs, but we've had great uh, involvement from uh, both Nassau and Southern County and from, and from State DUC. Um, The DFWG, you guys have heard of this, I hope. Uh, the, the Long Island Diadromous Fish Work Group was actually started uh, by the, the good folks at the South Shore Estuary Reserve and uh, now includes all the, all the estuary programs, the state and counties, uh, lots of NGOs. Um, it's a group that meet, we meet two or three times a year and talk about projects on the island. If you're, if you're interested in this work and not involved, we'd, uh, we'd love to have you. Um, we'll probably have another meeting again over the winter. Anything you want to add about the, the work group? Well, it's just been it's been a great benefit to get everybody together to talk about these things, from Charter Unlimited to local communities, local towns, the county, uh, state biologists from the state and county biologists from all over. So it's been a big plus in terms of sitting down at the table in a non-pressure situation to discuss options for fish passage. Yep. Uh, and then one of the other important things that the work group has done is organize this uh, the Long Island Volunteer Alewife Survey. And this is, I think we did our 11th year this past spring. Um, it's a great citizen science project. We're basically uh, tr you know, training people to go out to their neighborhood streams and, and look for these fish. And I, um, you know, it, it takes a lot of eyes on the ground, boots on the ground, eyes on the ground to find them. In some, in some cases, where we're talking about small runs, um, I, I said, I'm trying not to use the, the phrase needle in a haystack, but in some cases it's like a needle in a haystack where you have a small number, maybe a couple hundred fish coming into a, a small tributary, you know, for a short amount of time. You need to have a lot of help trying to find these fish. So it's been a great success. Uh, we've identified new runs across the island, we'll, we'll get to that, including uh, just this past year, two, two new tributaries on the island where we, where this volunteer survey found river herring that we didn't know existed, so mm -hmm. we're very excited. Since, since 2010, we've added six more rivers to our list of confirmed rivers with alewives in them. So we're up to, we're up to 20, which is exciting. Um, the most of them on the South Shore, uh, including the, we had the, found the Mill River this year, we found fish, and, uh, uh Belmore, Bel was it Belmore Creek? Belmore Creek, yep. Six on the North Shore, four out on the East End, and, can't forget the Bronx River. 
Um, we're just going to sort of touch on a couple of highlights. Uh, the biggest run on the island is not surprisingly uh, the only tributary that that, uh, that I'm aware of that, uh, that has never been permanently dammed. Uh, Go ahead, finish up. Alewife Creek, which comes out of North Sea Harbor and winds its way up the Big Fresh Pond. Uh, the fish do encounter a culvert there, which, which gives them uh, some pause at low tide, but they can basically get through unobstructed otherwise. And yeah, this is the largest run on Long Island. It's been documented at 80,000 adults, producing over a million juveniles a year. Uh, there is one other run on the east end that is undammed. Um, and that's Big Fresh Pond, oh, no, that, yeah, it's Big Fresh Pond off Montauk, mm -hmm. a Big Reed Pond, I'm sorry. Uh, the problem there is the Fragmites overgrowth of the stream. Uh, but this year, DEC confirmed juvenile alewives in the, in the lake in their survey, electrofishing survey. So the adults are getting here. There we go, there is a laser pointer next to the laptop. Uh, this is this is a picture of the of the stream, Alewife Creek going into Big Fresh Pond. I think those are fish coming out. Yes, yes, right in the center of the screen, that ripply area, and you can see the fin sticking out of the water. Um, these were fish that were exiting after spawning. There they are. The other great success uh, story on the island, of course, as John alluded to, is the Conic River, uh, home to the first, uh, the first fish passage effort at, at Granduel Park. Yes. Originally it was uh, a bucket brigade, mm -hmm. and then a temporary fish ladder, which how many, how many years did you, did you put that in? That was put in nine years. The first, nine the first years. effort to move fish in the Peconic was 1995, which was a bucket brigade. Um, lots of man effort to move uh, about 100 fish. Um, and then with the local community input and private funding, <clears throat> this group bought an Alaska Steep Pass, a local engineering company uh, donated equipment, time, and manpower to put it in the dam. Uh, that was, had, it was put in in the 1st of March every year and had to be removed by the 1st of May under permit conditions. Uh, but it successfully passed fish over the dam uh, while the uh, process was completed for the rock ramp, which has replaced it. So the ramp, if you're not, not familiar with this is the head of tide here in downtown Riverhead. Granduel Park is here. That's where the rock ramp is. And uh, the fish are getting through there, as Byron said, in big numbers. And almost all of them seem to be making this turn up to the little, little river where they hit Woodhull Dam. Uh, this is one of Byron's pictures. That they congregated the base of the dam there by the thousands and tens of thousands sometimes. Um, and uh, we're excited to say that the, the Suffolk County is, a, is advancing a, a, a project here to move these fish past the Woodhull Dam. Um, any, 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 new, any new updates on that? We, Still waiting for good news. Still waiting for good news, sorry. But it's coming. Um, the permits are still, the permits have not been issued, correct? Not been issued, but they haven't applied for them. Yes, yes. And we're, they're in, under review at this point, from yeah. what I understand, yes. And there are a few grant applications out there to get funding to do the construction. There's a design that. Yeah, and then in the meantime, the, the <coughs> I guess the program is advancing <coughs> uh, projects upstream where we don't, even in places where the fish can't get to yet, but. Um, in the hopes that as the, as the run in the river grows, they'll have full access access to the, how many miles of river habitat there? Uh, probably another six to ten miles, and probably over 200 acres of open water. Yeah, a lot of good, a lot of great potential. This is an interesting river, and in it has got a number of dams on it. Dam removal was broached for Gradual Park was resoundingly rejected by the community and the local citizen uh, because it's a historic dam. Um, one of the people who donated heavily to the fish ladder, his family owned the mill that sat on top of the dam. 
and he has his hardware store just across the street from the dam. Um, the other dam's upstream. Again, there's residents around it. Uh, the next dam upstream has power cables, and power lines, and gas lines running through the dam, which creates another whole set of issues. The next one upstream blocks off a huge, the, the biggest lake on the system, uh, which is Forge Lake or Peconic Lake, which I believe is just under 200 acres in size. Um, that one is going to get resistance if we want to remove it. Um, and then the fourth dam upstream, the Edwards Avenue Dam, already has been rebuilt and fish passage and American Eel Passage put in place. So once we get through the two dams downstream, they can move pretty much throughout the entire system. There is one other dam upstream of that that's a privately owned piece of property, privately owned dam for a uh, funding or fishing game club, sportsman's club. It's actually county owned, it's just leased. Okay. <clears throat> How do you know, I mean, to ask the question, how do you know that um, most of the run is turning into the Little River? Because we examined fish at the next passage up on the main stem. Um, this year I saw more at Upper Mills, which is the next dam upstream, than I'd seen in the last four or five years, but that was only a few hundred fish. Uh, whereas at Little River, it's in the tens of thousands. Uh, this run is probably the second largest, it, well, not probably, is the second largest on Long Island. It has the potential with passage at all these dams to be the largest run on the island. John Walvin and I have had discussions of this, and I think this was several years ago, we were talking about 100,000 fish. Um, I think I might push that higher at this point. It, you know, I think Alice and I have talked about a million, we might be a little ambitious, but it could be a very substantial run for Long Island. It's, a, it's the largest river on the island and has the most potential for open space for spawning. Uh, the reason I ask that is I'm wondering, uh, you know, why the run turns into the little river there? I mean, have you done any interesting <coughs> place to look at some temperature monitoring? Well, uh, there is an answer to your question why they turn left into the little river. And this goes back two decades. Um, I don't see any EDC, EDC officers here in the room. Um, the fish have had assistance getting over that dam for 20 years. So they've been going to Wildwood Lake to spawn. Uh, some fish have overwintered in Wildwood Lake, some juveniles. Um, but uh, several thousand fish a year have been passed over the top of that dam by bucket brigade. Uh, when harvest was allowed, um, I'd see people harvesting there, I'd say, okay, these fish want to be over there, so when you take a bucket home, put a bucket over the top. So that has helped. That's part of the reason why they turned that way. Um, <clears throat> the same thing would happen once we open up further upstream in the main stem, that run will start to develop. Yeah, I mean, the other thing we've talked about is this idea of the, of the attraction flow. The fish are when they come up there, you know, they're, they're in proximity to that, but they come up right here. And then this is a this is a sort of warmer, more more stagnant water body than this is. And and the fish and wildlife folks keep talking to us about this idea of attraction flow, and they're gonna they're sensing that fresh water flowing at them from the left there. So there's a there's a, I think there's a couple things conspiring mm -hmm. to push them in that direction. And, and the other I mean sorry, I, I keep asking questions, but the do you have any idea of the fraction of blueback herring here versus alewives? As far as I can tell, it is 100% alewives in that system. There has been some evidence of blueback in the South Shore Stream, the Clamage River in right. particular. Um, I looked this year, I sacrificed some fish in my sampling on the Peconic, opened them up to inspect the peritoneum, which is the absolute primary key for identifying them. It was 100% animal wives and about 60 fish. And those fish all went to feed ospreys and eagles of mention, so they were put to good use. Not bait. <laughs> uh, another significant tributary we worked on is the Carmen's River. This is, um, of course, this starts at Wertheim National Wildlife Refuge and um, flows up into Southern uh, County Park. This is the dam at Hards Lake there. 
that was the site of the uh, first permanently installed fishway on Long Island, uh, 2009, eight? Yes. And this goes, you know, one of the sort of, sort of now legendary stories about this fishway is that uh, and they were, as they were finishing the project and, and the story is as they were like tightening the bolts to the wall in, in the spring of that year, the fish, and they pulled the boards out, the fish were almost immediately swimming off the ladder. Um, this goes to John's point that they, you know, they are resilient, they will keep going, this idea of you know, if you build it, they will come. If you give them a chance, they, they will uh, use these. One of the saving graces on a, on a number of these tidal streams on Long Island is that the first barrier is further enough upstream so that there's some freshwater habitat just below the dam that these fish can spawn, so you have a remnant population. The Commons has a maybe a half a mile of suitable spawning habitat below this dam. Um, and that run maintained itself over the course of time. Um, it's been, it was 2008 that this was put in. The, the fish ladder had to be tweaked a bit to get the fish to accept it, uh, but now we're getting fish above it. Um, how, how effective it is is a, sub, a question. Uh, the DEC and Stony Brook University have done some testing there with radio tags uh, and tracking them. They do get the fish using it, going in and out. Uh, so it is successful. It's going to take a few years to see the run expand in the commons. And there's a couple more dams that need to be passed as well. Some pictures from upstream in the, in the Carmen's. Uh, and then the Carls River is, our, is the last one that we're going to touch on. Um, in, in the, starts in the village of Babylon, flows us through uh, Belmont Lake State Park. <coughs> Uh, this was a site of back up to that picture just yeah. a second. This is an interesting picture. You're looking for the Carl's River. It's, it's the one to the left. But you see the other little ponds on the streams east of that. All of those have the potential to produce some alewives. And those are the places that we're finding where you find a few fish, probably by accident, when we got whatever our volunteers are out there looking. But all of those could support some fish or could be candidates for dam removal to open up those stream systems. So th this site, this is the uh, Argyle Lake here in the, in the heart of the village of Babylon on Montauk Highway. Uh, this is where we had a fishway installed in 2013 um, with some help from the um, NOAA Restoration Center. We got some funding from NOAA for that project. Uh, we, I, we documented fish moving through that ladder the first year it was available to them. And it seems to be a number that's growing. And so now we've given them, we've given them access, in theory, to the lake uh, and this really great stretch of habitat here. We just haven't been able to find that they're actually using it yet. So that's one of our goals. And then we have our sites set on this impoundment, which is Southerns Pond. And then north of Southerns is about uh, three miles worth of, of unobstructed habitat uh, before it gets to Belmont Lake. So we, you know, that's a, it's a largely protected corridor uh, owned by uh, New York State Parks and a site, a place where we really think there's lots of potential for uh, growing this run after if we can get them past here. And the, the, the village of Babylon, this, this dam is owned by the state, but the village of Babylon maintains it through a long-term partnership. And uh, they have some, some money, from, some post-Sandy money. They've identified this as a site for fish passage uh, we've been pushing them to, t to at least consider dam removal. We think this is one of the best opportunities uh, on Long Island to remove a dam in a place where it's owned by the state. There's no homeowners that own anything, any, any shoreline around it. Um, we document the Trout Unlimited has documented the, the impacts that the, this very shallow stream is having uh, on, on the temperature of the river downstream, and we we presented this information to the mayor. Uh, he seems interested, and um, we're, we're trying to nudge them along, and, and uh, we're hoping they would attend today. I don't see that they made it, but we're going we're gonna to show them the video, so <laughs> <laughs> lock him in his office one of these days and show him the video. Um, so that's one of our, our targets. That's the, that's the fishway that exists at Argyle Lake. 
And this is, the, this is a picture of some of the habitat upstream. It's really nice, ideal uh, river herring habitat. So that's all we had on that. And then I just wanted to also show you We've been working on this map, this GIS map of all uh, Long Island tributaries. And really, you know, we, we started working with the Diagnostic Fish Work Group. Um, the first year I got involved, there was really, there were, there were two projects. There was the rock ramp in Grangeville, and there was the Carmen's uh, Dam project. And so it was pretty easy to keep your head around the two, pro the two projects on Long Island. Uh, now there's now there's dozens of them, and every you know, these meetings it's harder and harder to know what site we're talking about. So we we conceived this project really for the purposes of the work group meetings and making it easier to talk about the sites and actually look at them and know where they were. Um, but now it's turned into sort of a really island-wide tool that we hope um, will help people around the island uh, find the streams, figure out where the fish have access, where they don't, and um, it, at the moment, it's really in this GIS-based map where people have to sort of know what they're, how they're using it. But the goal is to turn it into a, uh, a sort of a storyboard GIS map that, that, that gives some of the background to AOIs and, and makes it more of a public tool. But just to sort of give you an example of what's going on here with the uh, with the colors, the places in green are places where the fish have access. Um, red is where they don't, and then blue is, so this is our lake we were just looking at on the Carl's River, uh, blue is restored. This should be, this is a mistake still, we're still, still fine tuning, it's sort of a beta version, we're still working on this, but that should be red, because that's Southern's Pond, but, um, and then every tributary has its own piece of, uh, you know, there's information there about the project and when, when the, if, if there's fish, if there's fish present, when it was surveyed, and we're going to build this out, we can add photographs and contacts and everything for people. So we hope it'll be a useful tool. Um, and then it does show. Actually, I'm going to have this turned on. So it does, the new version will have uh, little eye fish icons and in the mouth of the rivers that have, that have existing runs. So you should be able to look at it uh, and have an idea of where the fish are and where we're working. And then every project, every, every fish passage project is going to get one of these little stars like the, the one here at Argyle Lake with some background as to what, what's either been done or what's being planned. So, uh, yeah. I have a question. I noticed that for the river, was one area that, is there anything happening on the Forge River right now? Uh, no, there's been no sort of projects there. I mean, there's a lot of interest in trying to clean up the Forge, of course. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know that we've ever seen Alwives there. No, and it's, it's one of those places, it's possible in that pool below mm -hmm. at Montauk Highway, but that's so tidally influenced. Um, it, it's, it's a mud flat at low tide. Um, I have not seen them there. I really haven't spent a lot of time looking there. The other one I mentioned when we met for the other fish passage, Cedar Point Lake, all the way over towards JFK Airport. Mm -hmm. Tons of, you know, herring trying to get through there, and there's a dam there that they can oh, really? in between. And I know that there's striped bass going into that lake. That would be a key place. Do you see where that red is? Yeah, we stopped at the border, of course, to Queens, but... Right, right, but I that think. could be another uh, <coughs> focal point. The only reason I know about that is because we were helping Nassau County DPW with a uh, four-pond study, and we were there, and mm -hmm. there was a huge fish kill on the dam. 
Uh, good to know. Yeah, I mean, so we're going to, I'm going to make sure you guys, I'll, I'll send an email when this is finally done in the next couple weeks. And then, you know, I, I said to the people who've been working on this, like, we're, we're looking at this across the island and trying to get as much information as we can. But everybody else is going to look at this from the stream that they know or the couple streams they know. And they're going to know it a lot better than we do. So we welcome your help in trying to make this as accurate and comprehensive as possible. Um, I should say thanks to Jess Ensman and uh, uh, Stacy Rice, who's not here today. Who've been, I mean, the, the, no, the number of tributaries on this island, when you really start looking at it carefully, is just remarkable. And uh, you know, there's so many nooks and crannies that they've mapped and, and identified. Oops. That's the end of the talk. <laughs> <laughs> we are other back but let me let me help yeah, just conclude with one one thought. Um, since 2000, we have put in oh, we've, we've put in 14 fish passages on Long Island. We've had two dam removals, one by nature. Hurricane Sandy took out the dam at Sunken Meadow, and the other one was Harrison Pond, uh, a dam removal, and that was in 2009. So as you can see, we focused on the fish passage, the phys putting in a physical fish passage as our primary tool. Um, and I think you know, that, that's important. We've heard a lot relied on that. Uh, we're still looking for air, air wife runs around the island. We're always looking for them. We think there are more there than we've even found. Um, how big they're going to be is not necessarily the important question. If we can restore, restore them, that's great for a whole host of things. And what we're here today for is to look at another tool for our toolkit, which is dam removal. And I think that's what we're going to hear about in the rest of this discussion today. Yep. All right. Thank you. Um,